I see you've made to another video of mine. That's good. You know why? Because you're awesome. Anyways, what do I have today? Uh, as you saw from the beginning of the video, I have an unboxing of a tool called USB stabilizer or Gardonix. This is actually two separate products. One is forensics, one isn't. So uh, this part has been gracious enough to send me a review unit, uh, which I'm probably going to end up buying anyways. Um, so anyways, let's dive in right into it. So um, what is DeepSpar um, USB stabilizer or Gardonix? So uh, the USB stabilizer is um, a device that can sit between your computer and uh, a device you plug into it. So let's say it's a USB drive or it's a SATA hard drive or it's a failing uh, USB drive or a flash drive or NVMe drive or M2 drive, whatever. Let's say the drive has got a problem and um, the computer can't read it because what usually happens is if you have a drive that's got an issue, um, USB is like the worst at handling problems, the worst. It, it, it's going to freeze the computer, it's going to completely freeze up and won't go anywhere. Um, even when it comes to like SATA hard drives or SSD drives, the moment uh, BIOS encounters a problem, what's going to end up happening is the computer is going to freeze and it's not going to go anywhere. Um, so you might be there forever trying to read the drive and on top of that you're damaging the drive because now you're forcing the drive to read. Um, when it's in a, in a failing state so uh, you need something in between um, that can you know kind of deal with the problem and then let you read the drive and then you can take your image or whatever you're doing so um, so what happens when you first buy it so you're gonna get it in the box that you saw there I think you're also gonna get some documentation um, the next step is to go onto their website and download the software which I have it here so we're just gonna run it and see how that works. Yep, you can agree to this. So I'm running it for the first time. So whatever you're seeing, I'm seeing for the first time. So I'm just gonna learn as we go in this video. Um, so what we got here? Uh, always on top. That's fine. Don't hide the system tray. Now right, let's log everything. Yeah, let's not log that. Data recovery settings, file system mounting, turn off drive if inactive, let's see, yeah, we, we need that. Uh, device, hard drive, SSD flash drive, okay. Read time of resets, hard drive resets. Um, so this is different than the resets you can do. So this is pretty much uh, what it does in the background. It seems like it's it's using the same kind of procedures uh, a deep spare disk imager would do or uh, some other imaging tools that know how to handle uh, failing uh, drives or drives that are not behaving uh, like they should. Bad block read retries allow, so you might want to retry. I guess this means if, if it hit, hits a bad block on the drive, what it's going to do is it's going to reread the, the block again. Uh, probably using different algorithm that this thing has built in. Uh, response to write attempts, ignore. Yeah, always allow. Oh, I see. If something tries to write to the drive, to your source drive, this will ignore it, or you can change the settings to error or always write. Uh, speed optimization standard or aggressive. Let's leave it standard for now and read time of the thousand. That's fine. Uh, commands. Okay, you can also reset commands and stuff like that. So let me get a drive that I know has got a problem and let's plug it in. So it's been a few days, uh, well actually it's been two, two or three weeks since um, the other portion of this video was filmed. Uh, it's because I ran into some issues with this um, USB stabilizer. The problem is um, this device only works well with certain kinds of uh, USB controllers. So I had to get a specific one, so I had to wait for it to arrive. I'm sure if you watch my two other videos, I did mention that I think my last video that I am missing a, um, a USB controller. So. It arrived finally after Christmas, after New Year's, so I have it, it's been plugged in. Since then, a bunch of drives came in and I've had more time to test and play around with the Gardonics and the USB stabilizer. Um, so I just recovered a NVMe drive on uh, DDI, which is a deep Star imager, and uh, figured, well, why not test this drive also with, uh, with the uh, USB stabilizer? So uh, I have it plugged in through a USB um, uh, adapter, so let's power it on here and see if it shows up. <clears throat> so this particular drive did not work at all in the client's computer. So as you can see, the USB stabilizer has specific firmware that can actually read and, and access a drive. And also using a different uh, research procedures. Uh, it's all built and pre-configured for you in this unit. Um, so the drive is plugged in. Let's see here. So it showed up. Uh, so let's launch our studio and have a look at this. Uh, for now, I'm going to uh, 
turn off speed optimization completely off because this is a uh, drive that has a problem so we're not gonna be uh, using any speed optimization for it so uh, here's the drive so let's just do something simple like maybe um, creating an image so we'll do byte by bytes and uh, let's see so there it is USB stabilizer is running uh, you can see the speed is dropping a little bit so this drive had problem on the uh, deep spray imager but we were able to read the entire drive this drive has um, a bit locker enabled, uh, so we had to take in a full image anyway. So let's pretend that we don't have the spar imager, all we have is the USB stabilizer. Um, so if that's all we have, that's all we can use. And in this case, the USB stabilizer is, is, is able to read this drive and actually give us an image. So just for a split second, I'm gonna enable speed optimization onto, let's drive standard. And you can see the speed's already increasing. And I think we, if we can try aggressive, um, we're at 300 something megs a second. So that's pretty good, it's pretty fast. I think it might be also limited by the drive it's writing to. This is driving to a 10 terabyte iron wolf. Uh, so there might be a speed limitation there, but um, let's actually have a look at this. And you can see it's reading at 320 megs a second. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's working and it's all going through the USB stabilizer as you can see it here. Uh, so let's stop this and turn the drive off and we're gonna wait for our studio to uh, stop okay so the next drive we're gonna test is a sandisk extreme this is a good drive uh we have these for clients but uh this is a brand new drive uh we can actually you know it's a healthy drive so we can test this drive and how fast this drive is gonna read so i'm gonna plug it in uh, we're gonna hit power and wait for it to initialize and there it is it initialized it showed up so let's launch our studio again and um, refresh so there's the drive here and then let's create an image from that and settings are uh, speed optimization is set to uh, aggressive and here's the speed almost 400 megs a second so that, that's pretty decent this is a healthy drive so you can see a difference um, I think that now for sure the drive is being limited by the um, speed of the drive is writing to. So let's um, stop this for a second. And I want to just do a scan instead because with the scan, um, it won't be limited by the uh, drive I'm writing to. Okay, so let's do a scan. Scan. And let's go. Let's see what kind of speeds we can get with a scan. We're almost reaching 400 megs a second. So that's pretty decent. So you may ask yourself, which one will be the right one for you to purchase? Well, that I can't uh, tell you which one to buy, but I can tell you the difference between the two. So the USB stabilizer is a little bit more expensive. You can handle um, almost any drive that's uh, hooked up through USB. Um, you know, I think, well, well, why would I convert? Why would I uh, plug the drive through USB? Uh, some drives, not this one in particular, but there's some drives that you can't convert to SATA anymore. Um, so the only way to connect to a, a recovery tool like PC3000 and some other ones is through USB. So since you can't convert to SATA and you need to gain access to the drive, uh, and the drive is dropping offline because it's got some uh, serious firmware problem or, or instability, the only way is to go through the USB and then you need to, a tool like um, USB stabilizer to go, go in between and kind of stabilize the connection and, um, and then you can um, recover the data. So um, by looking at these two tools, I think in forensics, Gardonix would be the best. Uh, I know I'm showing Gardonix, uh, the actual unit that I have is Gardonix, but it's actually been flashed with a USB stabilizer firmware. So these units are a little bit different. So yeah, if you go to Gardonix website, I'm gonna link everything below. If you go to Gardonix website, you can actually read about uh, many different features of Gardonix. Uh, I won't be able to cover all of it in this video, but Gardonix can do write, write blocking, so you can use any tool like FTK Imager. I can actually launch FTK Imager here. So let's say I wanted to um, image this uh, SSD that's plugged in the, uh, the sand disk. Let's say I want to create a disk image and uh, I'm, I'm in the field and I need to make a forensic copy and I'll be, I'm do hash values and all that stuff. So let's say I don't have anything other than the Gardonix. So just create a physical image. Choose my drive. There it is here. 
put all your all your um, case information, destination folder. Let's drop it into um, into this folder. Uh, put some name. And we can start so now we are right protected so we can modify the evidence and now we make an image with uh, tools like FTK imager who, which does not have a built-in right protection so Gerdonings itself is about $320 um, if you want a professional upgrade um, that gives you more functionality then obviously it's better to get the professional edition and also the adapters I, I have most of the adapters so we're not purchase any adapters but um, if we're buying it and we didn't have any of the adapters, we'd probably buy all of it. Now, USB stabilizer, it's a little bit more, it's, it's a more of a professional tool for data recovery facilities. Plus, you know, you can use it as a, as a small repair shop. Um, you also get the adapters for 250 and the stabilizer itself, it's $1,400 plus taxes and delivery and, and all that. So it's about 1700 bucks, give or, give or take. Um, but you can read more about it, uh, on, on the website. They have a demo video. Um, the Gardonix itself, you can ask for a demo, you, they can actually send you a demo um, unit. Uh, you can get it for two weeks for testing. Uh, I, I'll tell you what else I've tested the Gardonix with. So, um, I've tested with, with micro SD cards uh, with eMMC chips. So, let's say I had a uh, eMMC chip that I pulled out of a phone and it was kind of unstable. I used to use Linux um, with DD Rescue, but I've noticed since I started using Gardonix uh, or the USB stabilizer, the, the, the chips have been reading a lot better. They haven't been dropping offline or, or freezing so much. I mean, if the chip is bad, the chip is bad, it's not gonna read. But I mean, if, if, if there's some intermittent issues with the chip, um, then the stabilizer actually does, that does what it's supposed to do and it reads. I've tried with the USB drives that have been failing, SD cards, pretty much anything that comes in that's kind of uh, on the verge of, of dying, I, I right away go with the, uh, the USB stabilizer because it, it, there's, I don't think there's any, any other tool out there that can handle uh, failing USB. So e even even if you plug um, even if you plug a drive in that's uh, got some problems, the the USB stabilizer can uh, use different research procedures, uh, read by retries. It's using uh, vendor specific commands. Um, so there's just a lot a lot there that you can do. Uh, so it's it's definitely a great tool to have, and and I, I'm I'm glad I'm going to be adding this to uh, uh, to all the tools we have in here because it's uh, it's it's always good to have specific tools for specific jobs um, and something like the uh, the Gardonix or the USB stabilizer is great at what it does and the last thing you should test is a hard drive that's failing so let's launch in our studio here and I got a drive here that's an 80 gig um, uh, just a normal spinning drive and we're gonna see how a USB stabilizer is gonna handle this drive we skipped ahead here because um, this drive is pretty good all the way from the beginning. Near the end is where where the uh, problem is. So I just stopped it and I uh, started it from, from the end. Obviously, drive is much slower now near the end. That's typical with spinning discs. They do get slower the further into the drive you get. And here we go. So the drive is hitting some bad spots right now. So. What uh, USB stabilizer is doing is just going to try to reset the drive and it's going to try to read these bad sectors here. So yeah, I hit a bad spot right here. So the drive was able to reread it. And now we're just repowering down here and there we go. So it's, it's, it's going to get past this bad spot In no, normal circumstances. If you're using just your computer and you wouldn't you and you weren't using um, uh, something like a USB stabilizer, you your computer would simply lock up. It wouldn't go any further. So as you can see, the um, USB stabilizer is trying to read these bad spots. Um, it takes time. I, I remember this drive being pretty, pretty bad near the end. So um, it's reading. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Like it, share, subscribe. So all the USBS, you know how I feel about all that. And if you don't like it, tell me why you didn't like it. I mean, I can only improve by, by getting your feedback. Uh, so yeah, see you in the next video.